all right then welcome back everyone let's solve this question add and divide let me uh, summarize the question for you the question is as simple as it can get uh, we are given two positive integers a and b uh, so a b greater than equals to 1 and we can perform two types of operation namely add and divide uh, hence the name of the question right so one operation is uh, you make a equals to a by b and another operation is you increase b by 1 right so b equals to b plus 1 and what we want to find is we want to find the minimum number of operations required to make a equals to 0 so all in all in input you have only two integers positive integers right positive which are greater than equals to 1 and what you want to output is uh, you want minimum number of operations required to make a equals to 0 so i guess this line summarizes the question pretty well you are given two positive integers and two types of operation uh, let me call this as a type 1 operation and call this a type 2 operation right so type 1 operation is divide and type 2 operation is add what are minimum number of operations so all in all combined like that is type 1 plus type 2 uh, to make a equals to 0 that's what the question is asking. So how should you approach this question then? Uh, we have two types of operation here, right? One is division and addition and you want to destroy this A. Now, one thing is clear here that if you want to destroy A, that is make it zero, uh, you'll have to use this type one operation, right? And uh, there's an interesting property about log. Uh, that is, uh, if you have a number, let's say A, and I want to destroy it by continuously dividing it by a number X, and it will consume around uh, like order of log a base x number of operations in other words if you have a let's say number 16 and you want to destroy it by continuously dividing it by 2 uh, it will consume around log 16 base 2 that is 4 number of operations how uh, 16 then 8 then 4 then 2 then 1 and then 0 right so around 4 operation right 5 operations consumed here so yeah uh, this is a property about log that if you want to destroy a number uh, by continuously dividing by some other number then this is uh, the number of operation it will be consumed. Okay, uh, what next? Now, there's no property about log. Uh, like, this is how the graph of log looks like, right? So, this is how log x uh, yeah, graph looks like. That is, uh, the larger base you have, slower the growth, right? So, uh, like, these number of operations to destroy a guy. And uh, larger the base, larger the base, uh, what do you mean by base? Uh, base is this, right? Larger the base, uh, slower the growth slower the growth okay and that is actually good so i'll show you a graph uh, to make things more clear now look at this graph like i have plotted a uh, log x uh, log x uh, base b for multiple base values base equals to 2 4 8 16 so this is a base 2 graph so you can see it is growing like at this rate uh, it is growing faster compared to when base is 4 uh, base 4 is growing even faster compared to base 8 and base 8 is growing even faster compared to base 16 all in all, when the base increases, the growth is decreased. Growth, uh, in the sense, uh, why it matters to us is because uh, this number of operations, right? So, if you want to destroy this x, these many number of operations you need, right? So, what you need is, uh, you need a graph uh, which consumes less operations, right? So, uh, you are better off uh, picking a graph which destroys the number very quickly, right? So, in other words, what I am trying to say here is, you have b, right? You first make sure that by applying some number of add operations, it reaches some x, some optimal value of x, which can destroy a very quickly. And then you perform the type uh, 1 operation, right? Type 1 operations and destroy a in log a base x somewhat, right? Uh, this many number of operations. And why it makes sense is, that is you don't apply addition operations uh, after this is. So I'll give an example. It happens because uh, when you divide a by x, this value is actually greater than equals to a divided by x plus 1. The important factor is here equals to, right? So, this value can remain same even after you add 1 to it. So, this can this example will clear it up. Let's say you have 3 by, uh, or you can have 4 by 3. 4 by 3 uh, is 1, right? Rounding off. 4 by 4 is also 1, right? So, by adding, there is a chance that uh, you will... Uh, not uh, be able to you will not change the answer right the value of a won't change so why do you want to waste that operation right instead uh, fix it up on a value of b first and then destroy it right because if you perform addition afterwards afterwards what like it can lead to this scenario right where you will waste an operation so we don't want to do that we want to avoid that instead make sure that b reaches to an optimal value and then destroy a very fast i hope it makes sense it might be a little bit vague but if you put some thought to it it does make sense, right? Now we have simplified our question too. Uh, we have to apply addition operation first 
uh, followed by the divide operation. So that is like at least we have figured out the order of operation. First add operation and then divide operation. Okay, now what next? Uh, what next can you think here? Okay, like I was not able to think anything after this. So what I thought is let's just uh, think about the worst possible case, right? So I was not able, I was not even able to think the brute force. Uh, so what I thought is uh, what can be the worst possible case? So if you look at the constraints, uh, you know that this A and B both are positive and I guess the maximum they can go is 1 in 9. The worst possible case, right? The worst possible case can occur, you know, since you only two operations, add and divide, where this B is very less, where this B is very less, but this A is very high. So this is the worst possible case that can occur, right? So that case can be uh, when B is equal to 1 and A is equals to 1 in 9. This is the worst possible case. Right, because the, you will have to consume maximum number of operations here. And how, uh, what will be the maximum number of operations here if you think about it? Now, of course, you won't be able to divide, like destroy A by dividing it by 1. So, you will have to at least make sure that this B is equal to 2. Right? Because dividing it by 1, you won't be able to destroy it. And the only way to destroy A is by dividing. Right? By adding 1 to B, you, don't, you won't be able to destroy A. So, you will have to make this, make sure this B is at least 2. Right, I am thinking about the worst possible case that is when B is very less and A is very high, as high as it can get. Now in this case, uh, I am not right now thinking about minimizing the number of operations, I am just thinking about what are the operations. Right, Just tell me the operations, minimizing the operations I can take care of it later on. But uh, for here, in this case, even if I have to destroy it, this B has to be at least 2. And if this B is at least 2, uh, now you will be able to destroy, right? so one operation consumed here. And now you will be able to destroy it in around log A base, right? Log A base B number of operation, right? So it will be log uh, 1 in 9 base uh, 2. So what is this value? So divided by 3 and multiplied by 10. So it gives you around 30. This value is somewhat 30, it's actually less than 30, but uh, yeah, somewhat about 29 point something here because uh, 10 power 3 is nearly equal to 2 power 10. So this is how I derive this result, by the way. Uh, but nearly equal to. That's why uh, this is the reason uh, why this is nearly equal to 30 and not exactly 30. Uh, fine. So that's that. So what's uh, what happened here? You will consume 30 number of operation here and just one number of operation here. So all in all, uh, you will be able to destroy A even in the worst case in 30-ish operations. Right. I didn't even talk about minimizing the operation. This is by no means an optimal answer. Okay. I'm not uh, stating that it's an optimal answer. But even after going at a dumber route, that is just making sure B is at least 2, just consuming one operation here, and uh, then trying to destroy it, you are not consuming more than 30 operations. In other words, uh, you are not consuming uh, more than 20 to 29 operations of type 2. This number is very less, right? So now what you can do is, you can just simply run a loop, you can simply run a loop in which uh, you are applying uh, type 2 operations, type 2 operations 0 till 30 times fine, very small loop right because it is anyway type 2 operations you are not going to apply more than 29 number of times that we already know. So you can run a loop which applies type 2 operation 30 number of times. So you can apply this type 2 operation here so you can find the base of your logarithm uh, in using which you are going to destroy A. This will be the new value right so you can calculate the base of the logarithm like this b is equals to b plus however number of type 2 operations uh, you decide to apply. I am actually doing the brute force here uh, by figuring out the bounds of the maximum value of operation right. So I am just calculating the base, this is the base if I apply these many number of type 2 operation and then uh, you calculate the total number of operation. What will the total number of operations? It will be of course uh, this value, the type 2 operations that you have let's just call it y plus log a base uh, like a base base <laughs> okay number of operation right and of course these can be computed very fast right this can also be computed in not more than 30 because of the constraints here right in the worst case you will compute this value and this can be computed again in 30 number of operation right so and of course you can update uh, the answer here so for uh, like uh, different number of operations from 0 to 30 of type 2 you can first find the base, you can then find the total number of operations consumed here and then you can update the answer. Then you can update the answer and total time complexity here will be what? 30 into 30, like the upper bound will be 30 into 30, 900. So it's a very less, right? It's a 
very less complexity solution and this will work right so i'll quickly summarize what just happened here uh, what you figured out first is you will have to apply addition operation first and then you have to apply divide operation you don't need to apply any addition operation after you start applying any divide operations okay and then figuring uh, looking at the worst case uh, we found out that there's no requirement for more than 30 ish number of operations or in other words type 2 operations won't be more than 29 29 or 28 something okay so what you can do is you can try doing 0 till 30 okay still a uh, safe bet right 0 till 30 number of type 2 operations figure out what is the new value of b that is first you are going to add right and then uh, figure out uh, how many operations will be consumed to destroy a this will also consume around 30 for each case and then update the answer right so this total will give you how many number of operations you perform total all in all type 2 operations and type 1 operations and then update the answer and you will be able to find your optimal answer in just around 900 odd iterations and your job is done right so here's the implementation i've already taken the input here ab and uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to initialize the answer answer mean uh, the total number of operations that we are trying to minimize then i'll go from i equals to 0 till 10 okay uh, this you should consider 30 uh, because it turns out that uh, using calculus you can even get a more stricter bound on uh, number of uh, operations of type 2 so it actually suffices to only go till 6 or 7 okay uh, like i haven't discussed it because it requires a somewhat of calculus knowledge i'll include it as a supplementary section uh, after the end of the video or maybe in the next video let me know if you want to know it uh, because i don't assume a lot of you familiar with calculus but even if you uh, make sure that this i is less than equals to 30, it will work perfectly fine. It is a very fast and optimal solution. Okay, fine. So, enough about that. So, this i is actually a number of type 2 operations that you are going to perform, right? So, these are the number of type 2 operations you are going to perform, okay? And, in, and each operation, I will try to destroy a. So, that's why I am storing it. And I, will, I have to also make sure one thing uh, that when you are trying to destroy a uh, by applying some number of operations, b is at least 2, right? For example, when b is 1, uh, you cannot consider the case where type 2 operations are 0. You will have to apply at least one operation of type 2, that is addition. So, that's why uh, you will have to first make sure that b plus i is at least 2. Okay. And then what I am doing is I am just initializing initializing these terms or number of operations with i. So, like these are like you can say the count of operations uh, for this case. So, initially of course you have applied i number of type 2 operations. So, that's why I am doing it. Turns equals to i. And then I will just simply destroy uh, this uh, x like this i am trying to destroy this x uh, which is actually a and i am trying to destroy a with this value of b right with b plus i i will try to destroy this value of a and increment turns accordingly right so this will consume just uh, you can you know in the worst case is 30 right because the maximum value can go 1 in 9 and the smallest value for this b plus i is 2 so this will not uh, run more than 30 and this is also not run more than 30 and for each value you are also updating the answer right minimizing the answer whatever number of turns you had for this and you can in the end just print the answer now for the stricter for those who are curious how does the stricter bound of type 2 operation come to be around 6 uh, so what we are effectively after is uh, we want to first make sure this b reaches some value x and then we can destroy a using log x uh, log a b is x number of operation that's what we want to do right so effectively what will the total number of operations will have the total number of operations that will consume will be x minus b the add operations plus around log a base x number of operation right so this is the total number of operation so let me call this as fx right so what i effectively want to do is i want to find a value of x value of x which minimizes this function right which minimizes this function which minimizes fx this is the problem of finding a maximum minima if you remember in calculus so that's what you want to do how are you going to do it? Uh, before I do it, uh, let me just simplify this function a little bit. Uh, let me write it like this. x minus b plus log uh, like ln a upon ln x. So, I hope you know this. If you have, uh, let's say, log a base b, you can write it like this. Log a base x upon log b base x. So, this is a property of logarithm. So, I have simplified the function. Now, I want to minimize this function, right? fx. I want to minimize it. To minimize it, I of course have to derive it till I find a derivative of it. So then I have to find f of f dash x. f dash x uh, for this will be 1, for b it will be 0. So I will not write it. And for this thing, uh, ln a will stay as it is, for, but for 1 upon ln x, it will be uh, minus 1 upon x. Okay. 
and then into uh, ln x square and uh, ln a will remain as it is so it will be ln a above right now if you want to find the uh, maximum minima you will have to equate it to zero let's equate it to zero if you equate it to zero uh, it will come out like this x ln x square equals to ln a right so i'm finding a critical point here by the way if you remember so i want to find a value of x uh, such that uh, this entire equation becomes zero so here uh, it will become zero when this x ln x square is equals to ln a now okay uh, this equation is not that easy to solve but uh, you can get a lot of insights by just looking at the graph of x ln x what can be the worst possible value of ln a all right what can be the worst possible value of ln a uh, the worst possible value is when a takes a value of 1 e 9 right that's what it is so uh, log 1 e 9 uh, base e is actually somewhat around 20 uh, i guess like the exact value is 20.7 something uh, but that's not important important thing is it is somewhere around 20 okay so now you want to find the value of x such that uh, this thing entirely equals to x ln x square equals to uh, 20 point something okay um, so if you can find a critical point here then we have a good observation about th other things let's just see the graph of x ln x square here so we'll get some more insight into this okay so here's the graph of uh, x ln x square so here uh, ln 1 10 power 9 is 20.7232 okay that's what i told and uh, now let's just look at what value of x uh, we get uh, 20 point something so this is a graph of x ln x square okay so you just see here uh, at what value you are getting it so 20 right so six something value is there where you get a critical point right for the worst possible case that is when a is 1 e 9 uh, your x value is somewhat around uh, 6 point something right 6 point something and uh, afterwards you will see that uh, when x is 7, uh, y is very high. And this y value, this 29, you will never reach. Right? On the RHS, that was ln a, it will never reach 29. In the worst possible case, it will be somewhere around 20. So, the LHS, your critical point, will never exceed this 6. Right? In other words, what I am trying to say here is, uh, you, had, uh, you had x ln x uh, whole square equals to ln a. This guy is never gonna exceed, you know, 20 point something. So this guy will never exceed 6. This I already showed you, right? If you see here, if this guy never exceed 20, this guy will never exceed 6. Because for even to reach at 7, it requires 29, but you will never get 29 on RHS. That is to say, uh, this x, right, this critical point will always be less than equals to 6, right? Critical point, I don't know what that value is because I cannot solve this uh, equation, but that value will always be less than equals to 6. And if you also observe, uh, the graph was uh, something like this, right? The graph was looking like this. So, f double dash x. So, this is a graph of f dash x, by the way. And f double dash x, the slope was positive, right? So, x is always less than equals to 6. And we already saw that f double dash x is greater than 0. So, in this case, uh, you are sure for the fact that whatever value of x you are getting, the critical point is giving you a minima. Okay. So, all in all, uh, what it proved is uh, the new value of b will be less than equals to 6. That is, that is, you don't need to do more than 6 number of operations because the smallest possible value of b is 1. So, in the worst case also, you won't be able to do uh, more than 5 or 6 number of operations, right? So, yeah, uh, that's how the bound is derived and uh, why in this code, uh, even if you write here 6 or 7, it works. But just for safety, I've written it 10 here, okay? So, yeah, that's that. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. I'll see you in the next one.